All right, in this short video, we'll show you how to use the cumulative principal function and the cumulative interest payment function to calculate uh, interest paid for a particular period or cumulative over a specific period and to figure out how much you still owe on loans. Got Joe with a personal loan repayable in five annual installments. If we want to calculate what each payment's going to be. It'll be five payments. The annual rate is 6.7 percent. You got ten thousand dollars going to completely pay off the loan. If we're solving for what each payment will be All right, so each payment would be two thousand four hundred nineteen thirty-five. The total paid, if he made five payments of twenty-four nineteen thirty-five, he'd give them back twelve thousand ninety-six dollars and seventy-four cents, which means that about two thousand ninety-seven dollars of interest. That's if he paid as scheduled. Oftentimes, we want to know how much you pay during a particular period, and that's where the cumulative interest and the cumulative principal functions work. All right, so how much interest did he pay during the first three years? Uh, to solve for this, you basically put all the same information back in. The cumulative I, pay I payment function asks you for the rate number of periods, present value on the particular loan. Okay, so that's the same. Note there's no future value in there, so if you have a, a set of functions with a balloon payment or something like that in there, you can't really use this built-in function, but it's for normal loans. The start period is we're looking for how much interest did he pay over the first three years. Well, from year one to year three, and then you got to space down because you also got to tell it the type. Uh, we can omit this step when we're doing the regular uh, uh, calculations that we've been doing because it assumes zero. If you don't put anything in here, you'll get an error message. Put in a zero, and that's a normal uh, uh, loan payment that comes. Each of the payments come at the end of the period. All right, so what that's telling me is for years... One, two, and three, the grand total was $1,650 in interest. The second part is asking how much did he still owe after he made the second payment. Okay, so the cumulative principal function calculates what portion of the of the principal was paid down during each of the periods. Okay, 6.7, five periods, the present value is 10,000. How much did he still owe after two payments? Well, if we went from year two, one and two, this will give me the cumulative amount. We got to tell it the type, which is zero. That'll tell me the cumulative amount that he paid in year one and two. And if I hit the go button on that, he's paid off 36, 15. So still owes 10,000 minus that. He still owes 6,384. Now I can make up an amortization schedule that'll do all these same calculations. If we start here with year. One, two, three, four, five. I can do this mechanically. The beginning amount, payment, the interest portion, and the principal portion. And that'll give you the ending 
principle. So we can calculate stuff like this and do it mechanically in a spreadsheet. These are just shortcuts up here. Alright, so he started out owing him $10,000. His first payment and I'm going to format this so it doesn't show any of the pennies and stuff. It'll calculate them out to the umpteenth decimal place, but I just want to keep it kind of pretty here. So I guess I'll show to the penny. The portion that's interest, you owe $10,000, the interest rate's 6.7%, so you owe $670 interest after the first year. You've had $10,000 of their money, 6.7% of it is $670. Everything you send them beyond $670 with these simple interest on the declining balance loans, the ones that we're looking at, goes to pay the principal. So the ending principal, after you've made that first payment, you owed them $10,000 at the beginning, you've paid off $1749, now you only owe them. Excel's going bananas with the decimal places. Eighty-two fifty. Okay, ten thousand minus seventeen fifty is eighty-two fifty, and that's what you start next year with. Your payment's going to be the same. Your interest is going to be six point seven percent of that amount, which you still owe them. So the principal is still going to be anything you sent them in excess of the interest. And so the ending principle would be the 8250 you still owe them minus the principle at this period. Okay? And if I just copy that down, notice that the principal paid these two numbers. If you subtract that from 10,000 and then that from 10,000, you get the ending principle, which is what we did up here. If you've paid off. 3615.9, which is the sum of those two numbers, then that's the ending principle you still owe. If we were looking for the cumulative interest for the first three years, that would be the sum of that amount, that amount, plus that amount, plus that amount, and that's the 1650.53 that we calculated up here using the QMI payment. Okay, so you could do this the easy way, or you could do this the hard way, you'll come out with the same answer. Cumulative interest and cumulative principle are just shortcuts that avoid us having to draw out all of this stuff here. But that's all it's doing is calculating what the principal portion, okay, for the, the first part, how much interest did he pay, it calculated how much interest you'd pay in the first three years. And that's where you get that number. How much did he still owe after the second payment? That'd be 10000 minus the sum of the two principal payments that he's made after years one and two. Okay?